Hello, everyone. Today, we'll be discussing Lee A. All's 2021 paper about timozolomide-induced changes in gut microbial composition. What is glioma? Before diving into the paper, we'd like to give some background knowledge of cancer in specific glioma. The leading cause of death in Canada are cancers, which everyone is familiar with to an extent. Glioma is one of the most common types of primary brain tumors found in the central nervous system, and about 33% of all cancers are gliomas. Cancer is characterized by the uncontrollable replication in the vision of our cells forming masses called tumors that are either malignant or benign. Cancers are very challenging topics to study as each person's cancer has a unique combination of genetic influences and therefore may respond differently to treatment. About 40% of people in Canada will be diagnosed with cancer at some stage of their life and risk increases with age, genetics, and environmental factors. There are four stages of cancer. In the early stages, they are relatively slow growing so that they potential to be dangerous and in the late stages can develop rapidly, spreading to other areas in the brain and body, leading to prominent effects such as seizures, personality changes, and death. Currently, there is no cure, but various treatment options such as chemotherapy, surgery, and for glioma, chemozolomide therapy. This is our table of contents. And now introduction to our article. Despite advancements, the prognosis among patients remains very poor and therefore serves as a topic of interest. It is well established that the gut microbiome plays a crucial role in human health and diseases, contributing to inflammation and immunity locally and systemically. This biosis of the gut microbiota is prevalent in various neurological diseases such as Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. Why is it important and what happens if there is disruption? Alterations in the gut microbiome have been shown to alter the gut immune brain communication known as the brain gut access. This biosis leads to the overrepresentation of some bacteria and favors chronic inflammation and immunosuppression, as recently des described in several central nervous system diseases. In simpler terms, as gut composition changes, communication changes, forming tumor tolerant microenvironments in the central nervous system, promoting the development of glioma. Objectives Alkylating drugs have been seen to alter the gut composition. However, the relationship between gut brain axis, glioma development, and how the gut microbiome responds and interacts with TMZ has not been investigated. The goals of the study is to explore the gut microbial changes following glioma growth, the alterations in gut microbiota observed during glioma growth, and the effects of TMZ therapy in a prospective glioma patient cohort. Materials and methods. So this experiment was conducted for 28 days using 12 pathogen-free mice who were purchased and housed under the same conditions of 25 degrees Celsius with free access to food and water. After seven days of adaptive feeding, mice were randomly placed into two groups, vehicle control and TMZ-treated group. GL261 glioma cells were implanted into the left vitamin of all mice. TMZ cavalage began seven days after implantation for five consecutive days, while the vehicle group received cavalage of only 0.5% SCC. Here is the outline of the experimental procedure displaying the process of intracranial implantation, TMZ treatment, and fecal collection dates. Fecal samples were collected at four time points as illustrated. T0, the day of glioma cell implantation. Day 7, the day before TMZ gavage T1. Day 14, seven days after the first TMZ gavage T2. And day 28, 21 days after the first TMZ gavage T3. The gut microbiota was analyzed using 16S ribosomal DNA sequencing. All mice were sacrificed at 28 days after implantation, and the tumor growth in all mice was confirmed by hematoxylin eosin staining. This was then followed by relative and absolute quantitation analysis. During absolute quantification analysis, the absolute copy number of each operational taxonomic unit was calculated by standard curve of spike in sequences. Then using relative quantification analysis, Lefsey and Crossbow Wallace tests were performed. Lefsey was used to identify the representative microbiome in each group. There was some phylogeny testing using PyCrust, pi which predicted in the functional profiling of the microbiota. The Kyoto Encyclopedia of Genes and Genomes and clusters of orthologous groups pathways were used to predict the differences in biochemical pathways in the bacteria. Here in the image, we can see the rapid gl glioma progression in the control group on the left versus minimal progression in the TMC treated group on the right. Results. Throughout the experiment, short-term effects of TMZ treatment on the gut microbiota were examined every seven days. During the PICO analysis, it was revealed that the microbiome in TMZ treated mice differed compared to that of the vehicle group. We see an increase of viral microbia at the phylum level and within the genus level, a higher abundance of Acromantia, Phytobacterium, Coprobacillus, and Clostridium. 
Subsequently, there was a lower abundance of coprobacter in TMZ-treated groups versus the vehicle group. Following the pie crust, it showed that pathways involved in glutathione metabolism and fatty acid biosynthesis and metabolism were upregulated in TMZ-treated mice. Through alpha diversity analysis, which is defined as the mean diversity of species in different sites or habitats within a local scale, there was no significant differences in microbiome between the, between the different groups. During the long-term stages, microbiota was analyzed at 21 days after the first TMZ treatment, P3. At the genus level, there was an abundance of aneurotruncus in the TMZ group and community diversity was higher in the TMZ group than that of the control. Beta diversity is the ratio between regional and local species diversity. PICO analysis of beta diversity indicated a significant difference in the overall microbial composition and left sea analysis further confirmed change in gut microbiota as well as the pie crust showing mineral absorption pathway and the upregulation in the TMZ group compared to that of the control. Trends in gut microbiota after TMZ treatment. Cresco Wallace test was used to identify the differential genre in both treated and untreated groups. Changes of intestinal monas and anaerotruncus abundance in TMZ treated mice were similar to those in control group. Intestinal monas exhibited constant de decrease during TMZ treatment while aneurotruncus abundance peaked at T2 before a slight decrease at T3. However, abundance in the TMZ group was still higher than that in the control group at T3. The abundance of bifidobacterium remained steady at T1, but increased at T2 and T3, while lactobacillus had no change in TMZ-treated mice. Figure C and D on the right show the visual representation of the trends of the gut microbiota between TMZ and vehicle-treated glioma mice of T2. At the top, we have absolute abundance illustrating the number of individuals per species. At the bottom, we have relative abundance referring to the evenness of distribution of individuals among species in a community. Discussion. Throughout the experiment, microbial alterations varied at different stages following TMZ treatment. We see similar increases of intestinal monas and aneurotruncus in TMZ and vehicle groups, which is an innate anti-tumor response that occurs during the development of tumors. Although the anaerobic trunk is decreased at T3, the abundance in the TMZ group was higher than that of the vehicle, therefore indicating that TMZ treatment prevents the reduction of anaerobic trunk. At T2, the abundance of acromantia, the phytobacterium, and viral microbia increased. This is crucial as acromantia is seen in patients who respond actively to immunotherapeutic PD1 blockade, which is essential to mediating tumor response. Acromantia is associated with glucose and lipid metabolism, improving metabolic disorders, hence being beneficial in this case. The phytobacterium induces regulatory T cells and the release of inflammatory cytokines, indicated that it has anti-inflammatory and immunomodulatory activities. It also produces folate associated with DNA methylation of O-methylguanine DNA methyltransferase, also known as MGMT. MGMT promoter methylation is associated with suppression of tumor proliferation and tumor response to TMZ therapy. Therefore, the increase in bifidobacterium may improve therapeutic effects of TMZ by producing folate to induce MGMT promoter methylation. Additionally, as noted, glutathione and fatty acid metabolism upregulated after TMZ treatment, indicating correlation between TMZ, oxidative stress, and fatty acid levels. The limitations of the study was only performed with male mice, so the alteration seen in gut microbiota is sex-dependent, and the female's alterations is still unknown. Um, additionally, pie crust analysis is associated with specific drawbacks as compared to those that use metabolomics. Further experiments should use metabolomics to reveal links among gut microbiota composition, functional pathway, and glioma growth. There is differences in bacterial composition in intestinal mucosa and in feces but here only fecal samples were collected for analysis. To wrap up, we were able to see the development of glioma and how the comp composition of gut progressed during the use of TMZ in mice and how it differed between vehicle-treated mice. We were able to see that TMZ further altered levels of several key bacterial populations, the induction of acromasia and bifidobacterium, and prevention of reducing aneurotruncus contributes to anti-tumor effects of TMZ. With the main experiment conducted during the study, its findings was able to help establish the association between certain microbial communities and the anti-tumor effect of TMZ in order to further understand the relationship between the gut and brain disorders. 
Metabolomics, animal and human studies are needed to confirm the role of specific gut microbiota in glioma growth and the anti-tumor properties of TMZ. And this concludes our presentation. Thank you for listening.